Hello guys, welcome back to Maths 24 Super Channel, the GCE Press Platform and GCE Maths Panel. In this lesson, we are looking at Introduction to Integration. Please do not forget to subscribe and leave your comments and you can visit our blog at www.gcematpanel.blogspot.com where we have past questions, answers and a lot of model quizzes for the GCE for you. Let's begin this lesson. Integration is the converse of differentiation. That is the reverse process of integration. For instance, in differentiation, if f of x equals 2x squared, then f prime of x is equal to 4x. Conversely, the integral of 4x is 2x squared. This can be represented pictorially as follows. When we differentiate 2x squared, we have 4x. And when we integrate 4x, we have 2x squared. However, the case is not exactly as it seems to be because we cannot smile yet due to certain things which we are going to find out. This is because this situation gets more complicated since there are an infinite number of functions that when you differentiate, you have 4x. For example, if f of h of x is equal to 2x squared minus 7, and you differentiate, you have 4x. When you differentiate 2x squared plus 11, you have 4x, and there are an endless number of functions whose derivative is 4x. So how do we take care of this type of uh, problem? You would have to notice that all the functions have the same derivative of 4x because when we differentiate the constant term, we obtain zero. Hence, we reverse the process. We have no idea of what the original constant term might have been. So we include in our response an unknown constant c called the arbitrary constant of integration. The integral of 4x then becomes 2x squared plus c. Because when we differentiate 2x squared plus c, we have that 4x. So this constant can be any numerical value which will match with any of the functions if differentiated. Let's look at some notations and signs in integration. In integration, the variable of integration is shown by adding d. d, the variable, for example, dx, dy, dy, that, and so on. So after the function to be integrated, we add the d, d of the variable. That is the variable with, with respect to which we are doing the integration. When we want to integrate a function, we use a special notation. This is the special notation that we use, and it's read as the integral of f of x dx. Thus, to integrate 4x, we will write it as follows. We have the integral of 4x dx, where this is the integral sign. 4x is called the integrand. Integrand means the term we are integrating, and there must always be a form, a d something after that function dx because this case is respect to x and when we integrate we have a constant of integration in our answer where this constant c or k or whatever is an element of the set of real numbers we have seen the reason why we are including this constant of integration therefore the integral of 4x dx is 2x squared so this is the integral why this one we are integrating is called the integrand the answer that we have is called the integral. Don't forget to subscribe and you can get this note at GCE Math Panel or the GCE Preps platform. Note that along with the integral sign, this is the integral sign, there is a term of the form dx which must always be written and which indicates the variable involved. 
in our example, we had x. So we say that 4x is integrated with respect to x, i.e. the integral of 4x dx. The function being integrated is called the integral. Technically, integrals of this type are called indefinite integrals to distinguish them from definite integrals, which we will deal with later. When you are required to evaluate an indefinite integral, your answer must always include a constant of integration. That is, the integral of 4x dx equals 2x squared plus c, where c is a constant of integration. So with this integral, the upper and lower limits have not been given. So when the upper and lower limits are not given, you must always include this constant of integration. We continue with the notations and signs. Formally, we define the antiderivative as if f of x is continuous function and capital F of x is a function whose derivative is f of x, then we can write f prime of x, that is capital F prime of x, we call to f of x. This capital F is the answer that we have after integrating, while this small f of x is what we were integrating, as you can see here. We are integrating f of x dx. The answer we have, you can represent it as a capital letter. This is just to distinguish it from what is being integrated and from what has been integrated. So when we integrate f of x dx, our answer is capital F of x plus a constant, where c is an arbitrary constant. So here, let us look at this simple exercise. In each of the following, determine the function f of x if the derivative f prime of x is given. Okay. So we should look for f of x if the derivative has been given. So let's look at this. All right, integration formula. The general solution of integrals of the form ax to the power n is given by, so whenever you have uh, questions of the form ax to the power n, the general integral is given by, the a, the constant a is maintained, you have x to the power n, you add one to that power, so you have x to the power n plus one, all that on the power, now the final power, all that on n plus one, now plus this constant of integration. So this is the general solution for integrals of the form ax to the power n. Note, we have not mentioned exponentials here, neither have we mentioned uh, logarithmic functions or trigonometric functions. We have just said ax to the power n. This is the form we mean. So for functions of this form, the integral is given as detailed on screen here. And in this particular case, n must not be equal to negative 1. If n is equal to negative 1, this becomes undefined. So n must not be equal to negative 1. Or in fact, what we have in the denominator here should not be equal to uh, 0. Now let's look at the tables of some integrals. When you integrate x, According to that general formula, you have x to the power, this x just means x to the power 1 plus 1, that gives us x to the power 2, and we divide by 2. So that gives us a half x squared. The integral of x squared will also be equal to, that is 2 to the power 1, that is x to the power 3, all that on 3. So we write as 1 third x cubed plus the constant, we don't forget the constant. So generally, if you have a x to the power n, then the integral is given as ax to the power n plus 1, all that on n plus 1 plus the constant of integration, where c is an element of the set of real numbers. Now, this is the special case we mentioned when we said that n must not be equal to negative 1, which therefore means that if I have x to the power uh, negative 1 to integrate, that is 1 over x, when you have to integrate this type of functions, we use the lean. And why do we use lean here? Because if you differentiate the denominator, you have this numerator, which is 1. So for integrals like this, which you are going to see in the subsequent uh, subchapters of this chapter, well, if you can differentiate the denominator and have a numerator, then the integral is equal to the lean of the absolute value of the denominator plus the constant of integration. Uh, this is the use of logarithms for integration. So uh, as we have seen from the general formula, uh, if f of x is equal to k a n to the power uh, k a to the power n x, 
then we can actually integrate as follows. Uh, with this particular case, this is an exponential function where the base here is a, not e. We are going to see this as well to be more explained. So whenever the base is a and we integrate, we are going to have uh, this that is over that power times the lean of that base. Now somebody asked me why have we not used n plus one and all of that because this particular case is an exponential function. The rules for exponential functions are different. We are going to see that, okay? If the base here was e, then we just have k e to the power n x, all that on n, because lean e base e is equal to one. So from that definition, the integral of x to the power seven as well will be equal to x to the power seven plus one all that on 7 plus 1 plus the constant of integration that gives us x to the power 8 on 8 plus a constant of integration as we can see here similarly uh, if you have 2 over u to the power 2 to integrate we know we can write this denominator as u to the power negative 2 so this integral becomes 2u to the power negative 2 du. Why du? Because this function is with respect to u. But uh, from integration, when you have a constant like this, you can always bring the constant outside the integral sign. These are some properties of integrals. So I'm now integrating u to the power negative 2 with respect to u. So I'll apply the formula that will give me u to the power minus 2 plus 1, all that on minus 2 plus 1. And the final integral is minus 2 on u plus the constant of integration. What about these other integrals? Good. So this one is actually going to give me... Um, we have the integral of root x dx that uh, root x is the same as x to the power a half so to apply the formula here i will just have um, x to the power a half plus one that is three on two all that on three on two three on two equal to two on three right plus a constant of integration which is c so that is what that integral gives us when we do the integration Here we have numerous examples. Make sure you attempt these uh, questions. Note, when you are studying online, especially drill and practice subjects like mathematics, when you follow the examples, it is very important that you solve the examples as you watch or at the end, you solve everything. Without that, you have just watched a video and you have not studied anything. So we can look at the integrals of all of these here, like the first one, 4x cubed, that would just be equal to 4 x to the power 3 plus 1 is x to the power 4 all that on what on this power 4 all that on 4 so the force will cancel out and the final answer here will just be equal to x to the power 4 right so this gives us x to the power 4 and then for 6x to the power 5 that will just be equal to uh, 6x to the power 6 on 6 so that will give us x to the power 6. What about x uh, 2x? 2x will be equal to 2x squared on 2, which should just be equal to x squared. And here we have a polynomial function, so we do it separately. The first one is 3x squared. When we integrate 3x squared, we will have um, 3x to the power 2 plus 1. That's 3x to the power 3 on 3, which is um, x cubed plus we integrate um, 5x to the power 4 that will give us x to the power 5 x to the power 5 and the next one the same thing when we integrate 10x to the power 9 that will give us 10x to the power 10 on 10 which is just equal to x to the power 10 minus x to the power 8 when we integrate 1 we have x okay um so minus x plus the constant of integration so here i've not added the constants in all of this this is plus the constants you can use k you can use c whatever plus the constant so all of the half plus constants 
um, plus constants. All right, let me look at the, um, the second to the last and the last one. So with this particular example, we can decide to expand, we can decide to expand, or we can let this uh, court be called to a U. We are going to see this in subsequent chapters. So if we decide to expand or we let this call to be called to a u, then we'll have um, x minus 2 when you integrate x minus 2 to the power uh, 3 all this on 3 all this on 3 minus uh, 3 x to the power minus 2 x to the power minus 2 plus 1 is x to the power minus 1. All this on minus 1 plus a constant of integration, which you can simplify. And for the last one, the same thing. Um, minus 2 on 5 to the power minus 1 is the same as uh, minus 2 on 5 x to the power 1. So that gives us minus 2 x to the power 1 plus 1 that is 2 all this on 5 into 2 which you can cancel out these two to cancel out we'll be left with minus 1 on 5x squared plus this one is the same as 3 x to the power minus 1 on 5 so we have x to the power minus 1 on 5 plus 1 what does that give us x to the power minus 1 on 5 plus 1. That gives us x to the power 4 on 5. 4 on 5. All this divided by 4 on 5. So that is the same as 5 on 4, 4 on 5. And we simplify all of that. So these are the solutions to this question. Please don't forget to visit our blog at www.gcematspanel.blogspot.com where we have enough in store for you. So um, equally, we can look for the indefinite integrals in these following cases, just like the previous examples we have saw, we have seen. We can equally look for these uh, integrals. You can get these notes at uh, gcematspanel.blogspot.com. Another thing we have to introduce uh, introduce uh, the definite integrals. In the previous examples, as we mentioned, when you integrate. When the limits of integration are not given, like in this case, you can see these are the limits of integration. Wherever the limits of integ integration are introduced, we have what we call an, uh, I'm sorry, a definite integral. So there are boundaries. This is the case of a definite integral. And whenever you carry out a definite integral, the numbers A and B are called the lower limits and the upper limits respectively. And you can see that the values of a definite integral is found by evaluating the function using the upper limit minus the lower limit. So, for example, here, if you integrate small f of x dx and you, uh, you have f of x as answer, that's capital F of x, then this definite integral is defined by f of b minus f of a. We'll take an example to explain this. So, here, b is the upper limit of integration. This is the integral sign. This is the lower limit of integration. This is the integral, the function that we are integrating, and this is the variable of integration. The variable of integration. We have the integral sign, the upper integral limit, the lower limit of integration, the integrand, the variable of integration, and the answer is called the integral. Let's take this example. The definite integral of f of x from a to b dx can be interpreted as the area under the curve y equals f of x from x equals a to x equals b, and in general as a summation. So sometimes they may ask you to find the area bounded by the curve f of x and the lines x equals a and x equals b. Uh, we do that by just looking for the integral of f of x dx from a to b. That will give us the area bounded by the x axis. Uh, the curve of y equals f of x and the lines x equals a and x equals b. So this example to integrate x cubed dx from minus 2 to 2, the integral of x cubed is x to the power 3 plus 1 as x to the power 4 
all that on 4. So we have 1 over 4 x to the power 4 on 4. And we take the limit directly, we will have, now the upper limit is 2, so we have 2 to the power uh, 2, uh, that is this, this is 2, right? Because we have 2 to the power 4 we integrate. So we have when x goes 2, we have 2 to the power 4, minus when x goes to minus 2, minus 2 to the power 4. And this integral is equal to 0. Normally, most of the times, when we integrate from negative a to plus a, the result is most usually equal to 0. Negative a to plus a, mostly we have the results we call to 0. So we have discussed this integral. If f of x is continuous and the integral from a to b, and if uh, capital F of x is an indefinite integral, then we can define the definite integral like this. So this theorem shows us how to evaluate an integral once the integration process has taken place. So when we have integrated small f of x dx and we have capital F of x, and we can now put the limits of integration. I can see that the constant does not appear. Why? Because this is definite integration. When you are doing definite integration, uh, the limits of integration uh, eliminate that uh, constant of integration. Now let's take this beautiful example to integrate x, 8x dx from 2 to 5. So when we integrate 8x from 2 to 5, we are going to have the integral of 8x should be 8x to the power 1 plus 1, which is 8x to the power 2, all that on 2. This is all that on 2 here. So we are integrating from 2 to 5. So 8 on 2 is 4. We bring out this out 4. Now when x is equal to 2, we have 2 to the power, um, when x is equal to 5, that's the upper limit, we will have 5 to the power 2, this is 5 to the power 2 here, minus, when x is equal to 2, we have 2 to the power 2. So this gives us 4 into, 5 to the power 2 is 25, minus 2 to the power 2, which is 4. So this integral here is equal to 84. This integral is equal to 84. Similarly, to integrate 6x plus 7 from 0 to 2, uh, the integral of 6x will be 6x to the power 1 plus 1 on 1 plus 1. So that gives us 6x squared on 2, which is 3x squared. This is it here. And the integral of 7x of 7 is 7x. So we just have 7x. Now we take our upper limit minus lower limit. So our upper limit when x equals to 2, this is the upper limit. So I'm going to replace all the x here by 2 for upper limit. That's why we have 3 into 2 squared plus 2 into 7, 7 into 2. Now for lower limit when x is 0, this is the lower limit here when x is 0. So we replace all the x by 0. And this integral gives us 26. This is the integral. What about integrating 2 dx? This one is direct forward. Whenever I integrate a constant, you just have to add an x to it. The integral of 2 dx is 2x. And we're integrating from 0 to 1. So when x is equal to 1, we have 2 times 1 minus when x is equal to 0. We have 2 times 0, so this integral is 2. The integral of 12 on x dx. So 12 on x dx, this is a case of lean that we saw before. We are still going to look at logarithmic functions in details. So when I differentiate the denominator, I'm going to have the numerator. So first of all, I bring out this 12 outside the integral sign. And now looking at this, my integral here. It's a rational function. If I differentiate the denominator, I'm going to have the numerator. So this, in this case, I just take the lean of the absolute value of the denominator. What if I differentiate that I do not have the numerator? What will I do? I'll apply other principles which are discussed under logarithmic functions in the subsequent videos and on the chapter. Okay? For example, if the degree of numerator was greater, I'll do long division. Or if I differentiate it and it was equal to a constant times this, then I'll do some balancing. This has been explain in details in the next videos. So the integral here gives us 12 lean 2 because we have 12 lean absolute value of x from 2 to 4. So we have 12 into lean absolute value of 4. In fact, 4 is already positive. So lean 4 minus lean 2. So I'm not bothered about the absolute value because these numbers are already positive. And lean 4 minus lean 2 is the same as lean 4 on 2, which is lean 2. So we have 12 lean 2.
Well, here we have some few past questions. Um, this was 2013, and this was GCE, advanced level, A level. We have the integral of e to the power 2 lin 2x. This one is just a trick. Don't be afraid of this question. You just need to convert from this exponential to its normal form. In fact, this is not even an exponential function. Let us see why. We know that 2 e to the power 2 lin 2x the same as e to the power lin 2x all squared. And e to the power lin anything is equal to that anything. e to the power lin a is a, e to the power lin b is b. So e to the power lin 2x squared is just equal to 2x squared. So this uh, integral here is just the integral of uh, 2x squared and 2x all squared is 4x squared, right? Well, this was not even a case of even integrating. It was just a case of simplifying. So this is equal to 4x squared. All right, so the key here was same. Another question of 2013 equals to find the integral of e to the power uh, 3x dx. So to integrate uh, uh, exponential functions as we saw previously, we just take the derivative of this uh, power. Derivative of 3x is 3. So 1 over that derivative times the function itself plus the constant of integration. So to integrate uh, exponential functions like this, these simple ones that we differentiate the constant, just differentiate the power or it is equal to the function over the derivative of its power, f of x on the f of x. So we have this d. Um, this was another question. I don't know which year is this. I don't know if it's 2019 or what. The integral of e to the power negative x just be equal to e to the negative x on the derivative of negative x, which is negative 1, right? And you now take the limits of integration from 0 to 1. So when x is equal to 1, you have um, e to the power minus 1 minus e to the power 0 when x is equal to 0. And this is the value that we have. Okay. Now, another question that we have, um, e to the power lin x squared, the integral of this. This one is very clear. We have discussed this before. This is just the same as the integral of x squared because e to the lin a is a, e to the lin b is b, e to the lin c is c. Therefore, e to the lin x squared is x squared. So, we are just looking for the integral of x squared, which will just be equal to x cubed on 3, as we explained previously. Now, what about this one? This one is the case of exp uh, of logarithmic functions, and we explained previously that if you differentiate the denominator and have the numerator, then that integral is just going to be equal to the lean of the absolute value of the denominator. In this case, when you differentiate the denominator, we are going to have 4x squared. The numerator is 2x squared, so we can do some balancing. So we should first of all take these two outside, and we can write this as. All right, so when I differentiate this denominator, what am I going to have? I'm going to have 4x. So I write the 4x here. But I have now changed this equation, right? So to balance it, I'm going to multiply, bring a half outside this derivative sign, such that a half times 4x here now will give me 2x. And this equation is now the same as it was. You know that I can take this constant inside and I can bring it outside. A half times 4 is 2. So what you still have here is 2x. So the integral of this now will just be equal to a half lean the denominator. Normally it should be absolute, it is absolute value. But why have I not put the absolute value? I've not put the absolute value because we have x squared here and we have a plus sign here. So this thing is always positive. Two times a positive number is always positive, now plus one. So this number is always positive. So here I am not forced to put the absolute value sign. I can now take my limits from zero to two, right? So this gives me, when x is equal to 2, I have 2 times 2, which is 4 times 2, 8 plus 1, 9, that's lin 9, minus when x is equal to 0, put 0 here, I'll have lin 1, and lin 1 is 0. So the answer is a half lin 9. But the half lin 9 is the same as the square root of uh, the lin of 9 to the power a half. And 9 to the power a half is 3, that's the square root of 9. So our final answer here is lin 3. Think this is the last 
please guys don't forget to subscribe and watch more videos in our next tutorials we'll be looking at exponential functions substitutions definite integrals logarithmic functions and so on thank you so much and stay tuned don't forget to share this video with your friends bye bye